This video is about the side wedge shoe and its impact on the distribution of pressure, the orientation of the digital bones and the process of placing the hoof. The data presented here were raised by a scientific cooperation between Werkmann and the Institute of Veterinary Anatomy Leipzig. This video is about the side wedge shoe and its impact on the distribution of pressure, the orientation of the digital bones and the process of placing the hoof. The data presented here were raised by a scientific cooperation between Werkmann and the Institute of Veterinary Anatomy Leipzig. The sideward shoe is a modification affecting the partial height on a mediolateral level. In the current study, the 4 degree elevation of the lateral hoof half was realised with a wedge pad between hoof capsule and horseshoe. The addition of material to the lateral branch or the application of unilateral wedges may lead to similar results. However, both mentioned variations create a significantly heavier horseshoe. The therapeutical intention of the side wedge shoe is the unilateral elevation of one half of a hoof. In general, this modification is used, but rarely. It aims at affecting the mediolateral alignment of the digital toe bones in order to compensate lateromedial malformations. Another main indication is a distinct unilateral landing combined with tipping of the hoof during the footing. A side wedge shoe is said to minimise this effect and correct the individual pattern towards a planar footing. By changing the angle of hoof and coffin bone, one can also influence the joint space symmetry. This can be helpful, for instance, when treating unilateral arthropathies, in which the healthy side needs to be elevated or lesions of a collateral ligament when the diseased region needs to be wedged. The effects of the standard as well as the side wedge shoe were examined by radiological and pressure measurements. The radiological examinations followed a standardised protocol and were carried out on a firm and soft x-ray block in order to simulate different types of ground. Two pressure measurement sensors were simultaneously fixed on the hoof and every examination was carried out on four different types of ground. You will find detailed information on methods and the execution of kinetodynamo examinations in earlier lectures on this homepage. Now we explain the side wedge shoe's influence on the mediolateral orientation of the coffin bone in relation to the ground. The barefoot situation as well as the usage of standard horseshoes serve as comparison. Every radiographic examination was carried out on a firm wooden block and a block with soft padding. On firm ground, the side wedge shoe has a distinct influence on the mediolateral orientation of the coffin bone. The unilateral elevation of the hoof by 4 degrees on average results in a 3.5 degrees steeper mediolateral angle of the coffin bone towards the ground. It becomes apparent that on soft ground, the wedge side enters the ground easily. As a result, the lateral elevation is significantly reduced compared to the situation on hard ground. It is most likely that the application of isolated wedges instead of a wedge pad would almost completely neutralise the effect of a side wedge shoe on the mediolateral alignment of the hoof on soft ground. As you can see, the lateral raise of the hoof is not passed on to the position of the coffin bone in relation to the ground in its entirety. Half a degree up to one degree of the raise are compensated. The flexible architecture of the hoof capsule and the embedded structures, such as the frog and heel pad, as well as hoof cartilage, explain this. This makes the compensation of unilateral mediolateral stress even drawing footing on uneven surfaces possible. Apart from that, there is a significant and reproducible effect on the joint space symmetry according to the coffin bone's altered position. On firm ground, we see a substantially narrower joint space on the wedge's side, whilst the contralateral side opens up. On soft ground, the effect on the joint space is minimal. Nevertheless, the influence on the joint space symmetry 
leads to considerable stress on the articulating joint surfaces on the elevated side and to distension of the lateral ligaments on the contralateral side. When using this shoe for therapeutic purposes, these side effects are to be considered and weighed against the gain. In general, joint space symmetry is a parameter that's difficult to evaluate as it is influenced by several additional factors apart from the hoof and coffin bone alignment. The ground conditions regarding texture and homogeneity play an important role too. Apart from that, the radiographic technique is decisive. Earlier studies show that the alignment of the long and short paston bone have a significantly greater influence on the coffin joint symmetry. So, the effect of the limb conformation and the body build are enormous. In addition, a radiograph can only show a static snapshot of the biomechanic situation. In reality, the joint space symmetry is changing constantly in relation to position and load of the limb. Despite using a standardised measurement protocol for all X-ray images, this factor is difficult to predict and has essential influence on the joint space symmetry. On hard ground, the sideward shoe shows no effect on the dorsopalmar alignment of the coffin bone. On soft ground, the wedge prevents the hoof from sinking into the ground, which causes a slightly steeper orientation of the hoof in comparison to a barefoot hoof or the application of a standard horseshoe. Because the side wedge shoe influences the mediolateral alignment of the hoof, the unilateral unrollment over the elevated side in turns and bends is more difficult. The leverage forces acting on joints and ligaments increase unfavourably. Every horseshoe has, besides the effects on bones, ligaments, tendons and joints, an influence on the distribution of the forces interacting with the hoof capsule. This section demonstrates which ground reaction forces develop directly between ground and horseshoe and the way they are transmitted towards the hoof capsule. Now we want to examine the pressure forces which develop between horseshoe and ground on hard ground while walking. A standard horseshoe was used as a comparison. The pressure distribution pattern of a side wedge shoe shows that considerably more vertical pressure originates from the raised branch. It is passed directly onto the hoof capsule so that there is 10 to 20% more pressure on the lateral part of the hoof. Individual cases show a pressure increase of 90% on the elevated side. Looking at the pressure distribution pattern on soft sand, we see the following. The widened outer branch sinks deeper into the ground because of the increased pressure. There is increasing counter pressure from the ground so that the outer branch becomes clearly visible. This pressure is passed onto the hoof capsule so that an average of 10% more pressure weighs on the wedge side. Because the wedge additionally hinders sinking into the ground, the resulting ground reaction forces are accordingly high. Isolated wedges penetrate the ground easily and the pressure forces on soft ground will presumably be smaller. The footing pattern is formed out of several steady steps which are averaged into one picture so that it shows the migration of the centre of force during the main stance phase. The average picture shows the footing the movement during the main stance phase, the unrollment and the point of breakover. Side wedge shoes are often applied to influence the landing in horses that show a distinct unilateral initial contact with the ground. The intention is to optimise the landing process and to create a more even footing in order to reduce the assumed shock and pressure peaks during the initial contact. All horses in this study show different individual footing patterns. Both horses in the following examples foot over the medial wall. The side wedge was positioned beneath the lateral half of the hoof, as mentioned before. In response, the pattern of one of the horses shifted to a more plain footing. 
whereas the second horse showed absolutely no reaction regarding the footing pattern after the application of a side wedge shoe. The effect on the individual footing pattern differed among the rest of the examined group too. The observed effects regarding the footing pattern also reflect experiences of practitioners. Depending on the reason for the unilateral footing, the effect of a side wedge shoe can be more or less limited. The entire footing process is controlled by the limb's motion to a great extent, which in turn is dependent on the individual body conformation of the horse. Other research groups found that the alignment of the hoof plays a minor role compared to the conformation of more proximal body parts. Especially if malformations occur in the upper locomotive system, we can observe that the effect of a side wedge shoe is almost compensated. In order to verify the exact position and height for the modification in these cases, trials with glued on wedges or screwed in studs can be helpful to achieve the ideal effect for the individual horse. It should be emphasised, however, that apart from the interacting forces during the initial contact, the hoof is also subject to massive pressure forces during the main stance phase. With regard to our own findings, there isn't always a direct relation between the individual footing pattern and the centre of force during the main stance phase. The demonstrated horses, for example, showed an even pressure force distribution and a centrally located centre of force during the main stance phase, despite their unilateral footing pattern. Through the application of a side wedge shoe, the maximum pressure forces during the main stance phase are shifted towards the wedged hoof half which suffers enormous additional stress. It should be evaluated for each and every individual case if a planar footing can justify this massive alteration of the pressure force distribution. Whenever a horse walks uncomfortably after the application of a side wedge shoe, removal and rearrangement is recommendable. Summing up, the application of a side wedge shoe offers the following effects. Especially on hard ground, we can observe an alteration in the alignment of hoof and coffin bone towards the ground. However, part of this wedge effect is compensated by the flexible architecture of the hoof. Still, the effect on the interphalangeal joint space symmetry is significant, and the unilateral effect on joints and collateral ligaments should be judged critically. In order to reduce the danger of overload and secondary pathologies, a temporarily limited application is recommendable, especially since the wedged half of the hoof experiences massive additional load and because unrollment over the elevated side is harder. Furthermore, it is not always possible to predict the changes in the individual footing pattern. A most accurate evaluation of the horse, preliminary to the shoeing, as well as trials for the exact position and height of the modification are helpful. When using a shoe modification like this, usually the effects on tendons, ligaments, bones and cartilage are at the centre of attention. Often the impact on the surrounding hoof capsule takes a back seat. By changing the pressure distribution and the supporting surface, we influence the sensitive blood circulation and the horn architecture significantly. Furthermore, additional tension within the horn architecture of the hoof capsule can provoke the appearance of horn cracks. On the whole, all the anatomic structures forming the distal extremity form a close regional and functional relationship. Therefore, the unilateral narrowing of the joint space on one side will inevitably cause an additional load for the articulating glenoid joint surface and a distinct stretching of the collateral ligaments on the other side. It is safe to assume that relief for one structure causes additional strain on the counterpart so that the efficacy and the temporary limitation of a shoe modification should be carefully considered for each individual case. Many thanks to our assistants and thank you very much for your attention.